Hello folks, welcome to Scratch the Surface, I'm E.J. Scott. Today my guest is Herb Koss. If uh, the name Herb Koss is not familiar to you, uh, don't be uh, surprised. Herb is a guy I know locally here. He's an 84-year-old man that's uh, seen the world many times, and uh, he's a good man. And uh, I thought, well, I would, I'd like to talk with Herb. I haven't really t gotten to talk with him in a long time. And uh, I thought for the podcast, it'd be kind of interesting. Before I get into what we talked about, just a quick plug for myself. You can follow me on Twitter at EJ Scott, the podcast at EJ Podcast. I have a website, ejscott.com, Instagram, ejscott1106. I'm um, raising money for charity. Go to crowdrise.com slash seven on seven. That's the number seven on the number seven. And uh, I, a documentary was made about me called Running Blind uh, about my 12 marathon race in 12 months in 2012. I ran in 12 states uh, blindfolded because I'm going blind from an eye disease called choroideremia that runs through my family. And I was trying to raise money and awareness uh, in 2012 by running all these marathons. And a documentary called Running Blind was made from it. So if you have a couple bucks, it's only 2 or $3 to buy it or rent it. You can go to iTunes, Amazon, or Google Play and get a digital download of it. Um, and it will be well worth your 2 or $3 to, to check that out. Um, it was really well done. So... Um, there you go. Um, and uh, blindness stuff comes up when I'm talking to Herb because, the he, like I said, he travels the world. And for the last 20, almost 30 years, he's been traveling with a blind man. Um, so they've got like kind of a partnership slash uh, friendship going. Um, and he'll talk more about that, uh, more in depth about that uh, in the interview and how they met and all that stuff, but uh, it was pretty interesting. Herb's a good guy. He's uh, we he's never been married, never had kids. We talk about you know how close he's gotten to being married. Um, he's a very private guy, but uh, I was able to get some inf information out of him about some things. He doesn't talk to his siblings. Uh, couldn't I couldn't get why, but um, uh, he was uh, he was a teacher and a tour guide and he's also a vet um we talk about his time in the military uh so lots of a lot we did talk about a lot of things he gave me an hour he was like i could, I could give you one hour and i said i'll take it i'll take it so i went to visit him at his apartment in hollywood in the heart of hollywood he's got a studio apartment um uh, where the buzzer doesn't work and he has to come downstairs and open the gate and let you in, which uh, I, I, I wish the landlord would fix that buzzer because he's an old man that shouldn't be going up and down, not stairs, but elevators or uh, if he shouldn't have to. But um, okay, well, I should say I know Herb for, for many, for a bunch of years now. I've known him for at least a decade uh, because Herb has hung out at my improv theater, I.O. West, um, pretty regularly for at least the last decade or so. And we talk about how he got started in just being a, a regular at the at I.O. Um, and he loves all the shows there. And he even gives me a quiz of, of who, I, who I've had on, uh, on my podcast from there that he knows. <laughs> and you'll hear that in the beginning. But uh, I had a good talk with Herb. He's a good man. So without any further ado, from May 11th, 2017, here's my talk with Herb Koss. This is just, a, this is just my backup. Weather-wise, are you okay? Should I put an air conditioner, close the window, or too cold, too hot? I think it's okay right now. Are you okay? No, I'm fine. I'll take this off. We'll see how we do. I think it'll be all right. And is this, is this How good? many people have you been interviewing? You will be my 142nd podcast. My God, where do you find all the people? People I know. People Nobody knows 142nd people. <laughs> you know. I do. I know lots of people. Well, a lot, but there's 142? 
142 uh, episodes. How many? And every episode had somebody. Every episode had somebody, yeah. And most of them come from I.O.? A lot of them. A lot of, a lot of, I, I, I interviewed uh, the Kikowskis, Craig Kikowski, you know, and Carla. Yeah. yeah. Uh, together or separately? Together. And I interviewed, who else did I interview? Uh, Aaron, oh, no, no. I'm going to have Aaron Krebs on. Uh, oh, I just had Paul Valancourt and Lindsay Stoddard together. That with his daughter? Uh, no, with uh, with his wife. Oh, his wife. Lindsay. I thought you said a daughter, Lindsay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Pat Finn I've had on. He was alone. Yeah. So lots of good people. Well, that's only five. That's only five. You want me to name everybody? No, but I mean, <laughs> I'm wondering for my O, that's all. Well, let me see. Matt Jones and Dave yeah. Hill. Uh-huh. Got them. Um, bo- 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 bo. Let me think. Let me think. You put me on the spot. Oh, Brian O'Connell. Yeah. Mm. I want to see who I rank with. Okay. Uh, how you How you think so far? Very good. <laughs> Not bad, right? I'm asking yeah. some good folks. And I got like a lot of actors too, like a lot of people my girlfriend works with. My oh. girlfriend's been on a bunch. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so people from her TV shows I've had on. Mm-hmm. And some people from like Saturday Night Live I've had on. And well, how do you meet people from Saturday Night Live? One guy's an improviser, Paul Britton. I don't know if you know Paul. He, um, yeah, yeah. You know Paul a little bit? Yeah, he's sometimes on um, Armando. Yeah, yep. I know. Short, a thin guy. Yeah, I know him from Chicago. And he was on Saturday Night Live for a couple of years. And uh, Taron Killam, I just. Taron Killam, I didn't know. I didn't know. I don't know the name. He's, he's been on. He was on for like six years. Oh, yeah. And I got him because I wrote to him on Facebook. But I never met him, and he just came and did it anyway. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Not bad. Okay. So uh, we were supposed to do this a couple of times previously, but you weren't feeling so good. Well, one, I was in the hospital. Two, I went to Cuba. Yeah. And then when I got out of the hospital, like a couple of weeks, I wasn't feeling good. So, But I'll tell you the truth, I hadn't heard from you in a long time. And I said, thank God, I think you forgot me. <laughs> I won't have to do it. But you called. <laughs> now I'm one of these, once I say I'm going to do something, I do it. You thank know? you. Thank you. I do it. Man of conviction. You know, I, you know, I just won't. Uh, so, uh, How was Cuba? Uh, not worth it. Not, not worth, worth it. You not. don't recommend it. Don't recommend it. Very boring, nothing there to see or do of really importance. Yeah. Did you go with anybody? Well, we took a tour group. I have a blind friend that I accompany. You still, he, oh, that's good. You still travel with him. Yeah. What's his name? Jim. Jim. How long you known Jim? About 23, 4 years. 23 or 4 years. And how'd you guys meet? Uh... Just met on a cruise ship when I was volunteering at the Braille Institute. And are we on now? Is yeah, that? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was volunteering at the Braille Institute after I retired as a international tour escort, and uh, I went to uh, a volunteer. I retired voluntarily poor, and so I went to the Braille. Institute to volunteer, and there was a lady up in Seattle who was running tours for the blind called White Cane Tours, and she said an advert- sent an advertisement down to the uh, Braille Institute here in uh, L.A. to uh, see if anybody wanted to go on her tours, so I contacted her and I said I was a tour leader and I was volunteering with the blind if she needed some help maybe I could help her and she was a little bit uh, I don't know she wasn't all there Mm -hmm. she was 82 blind in one eye suffered a stroke Mm. and she told me if I wanted to work with the blind I had to put on a I had to go to a um, a supermarket parking lot and put on a blindfold and walk around the parking lot 
Okay. You know, so who does that? You know, that's that's crazy. Yeah. My people just don't go walking around. Yeah, it sounds dangerous. Well, I just hear all the cars. So anyway, when... What was her point of saying that? Well, she said so I'd know what it was like to be blind. Okay. And uh, I guess, I'm assuming. And uh, she called me a couple of weeks later and said, did you do what I told you? I said, yes, but I liked it so much I did it for two hours. Yeah. You know, being sarcastic. And she's, oh, well, that's wonderful. <laughs> Couldn't believe it. So, uh, Did you do it? Did you actually do it? No. no. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Okay. You know. So, so she bought it? She bought it, and uh, she asked me to come with on a cruise to Hawaii. Sounds and nice. uh, I would not get paid, but I wouldn't have to pay for the cruise. So I said, sure. And... Uh, there were about uh, 11, 12 blind people and a couple of us assisting her. And uh, she was already out of it, like I said, 82, suffered a stroke, blind in one eye. And uh, she didn't want them to do anything but stay on the ship. And uh, Hawaii, there are a lot of optional tours, and she wouldn't take them. And so I took them. and. So they asked me to take over, and I said no. And then she took him to Greece, fell in the shower, had to be medically evacuated, oh, geez. and the whole group. So a couple of them contacted me, and I said, okay. So for many years, I took them out on uh, cruises to a few tours, but mainly cruises. They uh, There were some of them out in Long Beach, and somewhere here in uh, Mid Wilshire and a few others who had no family so they'd like to go away at Christmas and New Year so we'd go to the Caribbean mm. and I got tired of that and I got you got tired was, of the Caribbean yeah they're all the islands are the same it's yeah just, <laughs> just boring and uh, uh, it came very hard for me because uh, some of them were quite heavy mm. and in the heat to walk around with two people, you know, each of them weighing 180 to 200 pounds got hard. So I just told him I couldn't do it anymore. And then Jim's father called me and asked if I would take Jim out on a couple tours a year. So I said, sure. And so we've been going uh, all this time to tours or cruises a year. We've been just about everywhere. It's running out of places to take him. We've been to the Arctic, the Antarctic, um, Greenland, Iceland, uh, China, Australia, all through Asia, Europe. Uh, we Africa? just came back from uh, Africa, yes, and just came back from Cuba. And we leave in September for the lake country in Italy and down into Switzerland. Wow. And uh, I, this may be the end, though, because yeah. 83, my health isn't all there now. <laughs> it hasn't been for a while. And I walk with a cane, and I often wonder what people in a tour group think when they first see this old man with a cane walking with a blind man, you mm -hmm. know, uh, just what they can do. <laughs> so... Uh, but right. we get along, people like us, and we've had no trouble. Well, it's admirable, well, you know, that huh? you guys are still going out and doing stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's nice to hear from myself, as somebody that's going blind myself, to hear of a blind man traveling the world. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. uh, does, does he seem to enjoy it? Yes, yes. When we go to museums, we try to let him touch things. We talk to mm -hmm. curators and... At the Israel Museum, they took things out for him to touch. Uh, the Hermitage in Russia also, and uh, in London, uh, yes, a lot of places. But most museums, you know, pictures are on the wall, and you can't yeah. touch them and you can't yeah, see yeah. the pictures. But um, so. Uh, Do you describe what's on the walls for him? Well, like no, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Now, you had your full sight, 
so you know if I say something is blue or green or red, yep. you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. He was born blind. Mm -hmm. He knows there's different colors. Right. But to describe it to him doesn't mean anything, right, you right. know. So, um, How old is he? He is 62 now. 62, okay. And no, he, I take it back, 66. Oh, I apologize, 66. 66. So, um, and who pays for the, does his family pay for His the family is extremely wealthy. Oh, wow. And so they pay for both of us. Oh, I don't nice. get paid, but okay. I get free. expenses paid. I don't go free. Like people say, I said, no, I'm working. You work, right. I'm right. with them 24-7. I right. mean, we even sleep in the same room. Right. You know, I'm from, you know, all day and all night I'm with him. Yeah. You know, so it. You know, I, I have to do things for him, which I don't mind, but to say I go free is, is, sure. is wrong. I apologize. Well, uh, are you guys good friends? Would you consider Oh, sure. Well, friend? we couldn't go if we weren't friends. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not going to go with somebody for 24 years who I didn't like, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know. I well, do things with people I don't like you. I don't like you, but I'm doing sure, this. You I know, appreciate say, it. You know, I got to try that. You're not getting paid for this either. <laughs> what? What? Oh, my God. You misled me. Well, this is the end. I offered Goodbye. you a sandwich. I offered Goodbye. you a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well, who, where have you liked traveling to the most? Well, you know, you have different favorites for different things, mm -hmm. you know. Um uh, like you say, take cities, for instance. You can't compare the beautiful city of Kyoto in Japan, which is a small city, with Paris. Right. You know, it's uh, they're different, but they're all nice. But uh, yeah, I have different favorites. Japan, East Africa, the wildlife, mm. Paris, Italy, France in general. But I would say my favorite country of all is the Indonesian islands. Really? Wow. Bali, Sumatra, Sulawesi. They're beautiful. Yeah. They're different culture. They're, the architecture is so different. The people are nice. The food, rice patties everywhere. And they're just lovely. Yeah. I, I just like that the most. Would you like to live there? No, 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 no. I, I couldn't live in Asia. It's too hot and humid for me. Yeah. I'm very sensitive to the heat. I just, I don't burn, you know, yeah. I'm dark complected to begin with, but I just don't feel comfortable in heat and humidity. You're a delicate flower. That's me, a delicate flower. <laughs> you know, I have to laugh. I come from Chicago, and I watch the news here this summer, and they say, oh, it's hot with high humidity, and I laugh. We have no humidity here. Yeah. In L.A. You want humidity, go to Chicago, go to Washington, New York, yeah. go to Asia. India, you could pass out. <laughs> yeah. You know, so they talk about humidity here. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, are you, were you born in Chicago? Born and raised in Chicago. What part? Well, the part of uh, South Shore. It's on the south side, mm -hmm. and it's just south of the neighborhood Hyde Park where... Uh, Obamas live. Mm. Uh, I guess they still have their home there. In fact, I went to Hyde Park High School, which is in that neighborhood, and I lived a few blocks from Jackson Park, and I read that's the park where Obama's going to put up his presidential library. Wow. So. Wow, wow. Did you, uh, did you like growing up in Chicago? Loved it. It's a beautiful city. Yeah, it's a great city. Um, people, tourists, American, European, uh, go there and they come, oh my God, what a beautiful city. Had no idea. It's yeah. uh, parks everywhere, green, and, um, you know, we have the Outer Drive, which is, well, Chicago's on Lake Michigan, so we have the drive that goes all the way from the north side of the city to the south side of the city, all along the lake. There's a lake and a park and the roadway and then high rises. It's just, just beautiful. Yeah. And it has everything you want. It has sports teams. It has culture, you know, the Chicago Symphony, the opera. And so it, it's a wonderful city. I don't think anybody would leave if it wasn't for the weather. And then all the young people here who come from all over the country, 
for uh, um, uh, the arts, you know, yeah. to get into movies acting and, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, acting, directing, writing, you know. Yep. So. Uh, when, who, you're, you were born in like the 30s? Yes, right? 34. 34. What uh, month and day can I March ask? 5. March 5th. So you just had a birthday pretty recently. Yeah, yeah. Two, two months ago. There's a few of us there from uh, I.O. Uh, Dave Park has the March 5th. Uh, Brendan Schoenbrender has March 5th. Mm -hmm. uh, my friend Tim Jennings is yeah. March 4th, and Dave Stratton is March 4th. Uh, so there's quite a few of us, four or five March. It's uh, it's good company. It's good, good company. company here. Yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm the oldest. I have seniority. You sure? You yeah, sure I have seniority. The, the problem is they don't show their elders enough respect. That's that's, true. that's the problem. They don't show age. anybody respect. No. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Any age. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, did you have siblings growing up? I have a half brother and a half sister. Half brother, half sister. So your parents divorced. Uh, no, my uh, they come from mother died when I was five, and so my father remarried when I was seven. Wow! So those two are from his second marriage. I see. What 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 happened to your mom? Cancer, breast cancer, okay. at thirty two. Uh, her sister, my aunt, told me seventy some years ago. Uh, women didn't know if there was a lump on their breast to go to the doctor. Right, so right. that's what happened. That's what happened in the, those old days, right? A lot of people just didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and then there's a lot of people at I.O. I fought with. I'm tired already, but continue smoking. I just mm. tell them that, you know, you're just smoking yourself to death. They don't want to listen. Well, yeah, they're addicted. You know. well, I was addicted, too, to cigarettes for a long time. Did you ever smoke? Yes, I smoked. And for like 20 years, a pack a day, and if I could quit, anybody could. Yeah, me too. Because I told them how to quit. I went to a no-smoking clinic. Oh. And they just told you for one day, preferably a day you don't work, so you take a Saturday or Sunday, and um, you just stay home all day and drink lots of water and pee and lots of water and pee, and the only thing you eat is raisins. Really? This That's is right. A, this well, is you know, I have to tell you, <laughs> as a work? smoker, you have to admit the only time, at least for me, really enjoyed a cigarette was after a meal. The other okay. time was just a nasty habit. Right. So, if you're eating raisins, you don't have it. You know, after raisins, I got to smoke a cigarette. Right. But the main thing is to stay in all day and drink and pee, and by God, it worked. Well, it that's worked. Great. How long ago was that? That you quit? forty some years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, did you did your parents smoke? Did, did, were you raised in like a smoke? Well, my household? dad did smoke, but yeah. uh, they didn't know about secondhand smoke. I'm sure if my dad was aware of that, he wouldn't have smoked in the house. Yeah. But he did, and so we all had secondhand smoke. But can't blame him because nobody knew about that sure, then. Sure. Didn't talk about it. So. Um, and what your dad do for work? My dad was a milkman, you know, we had uh, milkmen then that delivered the dairy products at your house. It's, uh, I've always lived in an apartment. The apartments here are quite different from the apartments in Chicago. In Chicago, you had a front door and a back door. Here you right. just have one door, go yeah. in and out. And the back door, there was a porch, and the poor janitor, the manager of the building, had to come up every day and empty out the garbage yep. for uh, three floors up. And uh, so my dad was the man that would run up and down and deliver the dairy products, milk, cottage cheese, sour <laughs> cream, and that's how he made his living. He came over at age six with his parents from from Europe, and uh, in those days, those people, you know, they they graduated grammar school. That was good because they had to go to work and help support the families. And it was my generation, the one that came along, that had the opportunity to go to college, you know, yeah. to at least graduate high school and and go on from there. So 
What, um, so your dad moved here at six from Europe. What part of Europe? Russia. From Russia. So well, you know, I said, Dad, where'd you come from? And he laughed. He said, it was, I think, part of Lithuania and then became part of Poland, then it became part of Russia. And he says, so take your pick, <laughs> okay. you know. So I think it was basically Lithuania. But, uh, so you, so he was moving, or your, pa- your grandparents yeah. were moving him here for a better life? Well, of course, Maybe. that's what people did, yeah. yeah. Well, not only that, though. Being Jews, you had to escape the pogroms. The, right. the Jews lived in, uh, those that didn't live in the big city lived in small villages, and they would come on horseback and burn the villages and mm-hmm. kill the people. Plus, um, if you got drafted in the army, which was, it was a 17-year draft. You had to go in the military for 17 years. Well, so there were a lot of reasons, economic, political, religious reasons that, uh, just like all refugees at that yeah. time, you yeah. know. Was he an only child? No, he was one of three, okay. the oldest. Okay, so uh, your grandparents had the other two in the States, or did they, were they brought No, no all three came over. All three, okay. Did you, did you ever ask your dad about those times? Like, no, he was only six years old yeah. when he came over, so... You know, what's he going to remember right. and everything. Did, did you ever get to talk to your grandparents about it? No. 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 Did, uh, uh, okay, so you have, you were one of three, you have two half siblings. Do you get, do you still keep in contact with them? No. No. Uh, did you grow up with them? Yes, but yeah. let's drop that subject. Okay. Um, in Chicago, what'd you what you do in Chicago? Did you did you go to school there? Well, I went to school and then I graduated college and uh, we had the army draft. Uh, everybody had to go in the service if they passed the physical, and uh, you went in the army for two years. If you didn't want to go in the army. You could go to the Navy for three years or the Air Force for four years. So I said two years is enough. Yeah. And uh, passed the physical, was drafted, went into the Army. Is that the 50s? Yes, in the 50s. Uh, 56 to 58. And I was stationed in Puerto Rico because I had uh, studied to be a teacher at the university, I wanted to be a high school history and government and civics teacher, and um, so they made me a teacher of English to Puerto Rican draftees, because they found during the Korean War, the uh, Puerto Ricans were drafted in the U.S. Army because Puerto Rico was a commonwealth of the states, and they found that uh, many of them died needlessly because they couldn't speak English. Mm. So they decided that they would give them two, three months of English training in Puerto Rico and then send them to the States for basic training. So that was my, my job. Uh, Puerto Rico. <laughs> I used to uh, go around the base and ask if the Pentagon knew we were there. You know, we had this lovely beach right next to the Army-Navy beach, right next to the Hilton and the Sheraton, actually in between the two. So that uh, was nice duty. <laughs> Very hot and humid, though. Yeah. We had siestas every afternoon. I bet. Mm-hmm. Did, um, uh, so you wanted to be a teacher. Did you always want to be a teacher growing up? I thought so, yeah. But then... When I got drafted, I came home and I couldn't find a job in Chicago as a history teacher because they needed math and science, which I couldn't teach. So I went to work for the social department, became a social worker. Hmm. Yeah, that's that. How was that, uh, being a social worker? That's uh, that's hard work. It's hard work. It's... um, uh, it's more than that. It's uh, it's hard uh, to see how, you know, I grew up thinking we were poor because I grew up in a uh, middle-class neighborhood, 
And as I said, my father was a milkman, which is, was a low-paying job, and my friend's parents were professionals or business people, so I thought we were poor, but uh, every night we would have uh, soup and salad and, uh, I mean, a salad with five, six vegetables, and uh, then we'd have meat and potatoes and then cooked vegetables and side dish of applesauce and milk or coffee and dessert. And then I became a social worker and I realized we weren't poor there. That was my first uh, introduction to poverty in America, so, mm. so that was tough. Yeah, so it, that could really stay with you, seeing all these people that need help and... Yeah. Right? Um, did you try to change jobs at all? Like, Well, what, what happened was I uh, always had this lust to travel. So I saved my money and I went around the world for two and a half years by mistake, by accident. How do you do that by How do you do that? <laughs> yeah. I decided I would just go to Japan. And I took a boat from uh, San Pedro out here to Hawaii, and uh, then the boat to Japan, which I was going to spend a couple of weeks or a month. When in Chicago, one day in the barber shop, waiting my turn, I picked up a magazine, and there was a article, pictures, in uh, Look Magazine, which was very popular at the time. I don't think we have it now. Of Jackie Kennedy, first lady, who was in Anchor Wat, Cambodia. And the pictures were just fantastic. And I said, I'd love to go there sometime. Hmm. So while in Japan, I read an English uh, language paper there. And there was an ad for a French boat. You go third class for $50 to Saigon, Vietnam, and then for another $20 you could fly to Phan Penh to get to the capital to get to Angkor Wat, Cambodia. So I said, gee, well I go home I'm $70 away. Well, that $50 boat was an experience. <laughs> Uh, it was third class, and we were down, 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 as far as you could go there next to the boiler room, and they, we humid. slept in hammocks. Was it very humid? In the yeah, <laughs> yeah. We slept in hammocks. Yeah. And Just one on top of each other, one of those? Type no, deals? no, okay. no, but just all around hammocks. And... Uh, when we came on, they gave us a tin plate, a tin um, coffee mug, hmm. a spoon, no knife and fork, because all we got was rice and beans, which are not my favorite. <laughs> well, it was only like a five-day crossing, but the worst part was the second, third day, we were out on deck talking. There were a lot of other poor young people like me. That, believe it or not, I was young one time. <laughs> and um, I said, you know, I'm feeling dizzy. I, th I don't know. I'm not feeling well. And they laughed at me, and I went down to the my hammock, and boy, we went into a typhoon, Ooh. right into the eye of a typhoon. And we heard later that the uh, captain was fired because there's a maritime rule, supposedly, that Captains are supposed to go out of their way to avoid a, ty a typhoon. It, yeah. uh, you wreck the boat and, you, you know. You kill people. Yeah, and it's very bad for the pat. And even the crew was outside mm. uh, vomiting. So they laughed at me. I was the first one to go down. Well, I want to tell you, being in a hammock and a typhoon spinning around, Magic Mountain couldn't couldn't do more, couldn't <laughs> okay. be better. And that I must went, have lasted hours too, right? Yeah, 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 it lasted all night. It was something else. Oh, so I got hard. to Vietnam. Uh, the American soldiers, Eisenhower, had just sent troops there, small contingent, to help 
the Vietnamese, fight the communists, and uh, so I saw uh, um, the capital. Um, Vietnam? Vietnam. Uh, God, they, they changed it to Ho Chi Minh City. I can't even remember the name before. Uh, I don't know. And um, then I uh, flew over to Angkor Wat in Cambodia. I don't know if you know what Angkor Wat is, do nope. you? Nope. Okay. Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos were French colonies. Mm -hmm. And French, um, I don't know if they're anthropologists, uh, what, um, maybe people building a road or something in, in Cambodia. And they came upon this lost city of Phnom Penh. No, Phnom Penh is the capital. Angkor Wat was, okay, the temple, Wat. In that language means temple, so Angkor Wat. Okay. Right, what happened, it was abandoned. It was a whole civilization, and it was abandoned, and nobody knows why. Maybe lack of water, and the forest took over. The forest just grew and covered up all the temples. Hmm. It was one huge temple and other temple. And the architecture was just beautiful. The figures on the outside and everything, the decoration, um, all along the wall, there would be uh, statues of dancers and things like that. It was just, just a spectacular sight. So they came upon this out of nowhere. So they cleared it, and it has become quite a tourist attraction, yeah, you know, it's just, just one of the wonders of the world. So I got there, and then there was, um, let's see, then uh, there I saw an ad to get to India, so I went to India, and once you're in India, you're halfway around the world. No sense coming back, so I just continued <laughs> through Asia, the Middle East, Europe, and that was two and a half years. Wow. And uh, I said I'd never travel again. <laughs> I was so worn out because I didn't have money. Right. And I had to do it on such a shoestring. And uh, fortunately for me, at that time, the dollar was very strong. Okay. And uh, I slept at hostels and things. But in Europe, but, you know, you do things, EJ, in your 20s and early 30s, that you wouldn't dream of doing in your 70s and 80s. <laughs> I'm sure. You know, sleeping uh, at the train stations in India and right. sleeping on deck with uh, Indians cooking uh, their hot spices, which I can't take, <laughs> and on the way to Africa. Uh, it, you know, you just cringe when you think about it, but I got around the world. Okay. And I said I'd never travel again, but six months later I was in the library getting more books on uh, travel, and I took off for three years and bummed my way around the world. <laughs> so another, I, another three years? Three years. So I spent a lot of money, and uh, not much, uh, really, considering, and I uh, saw the world, and uh, very grateful. But I came back, and I decided I didn't want to teach anymore. So I became a social worker, hmm. and then I sent out a lot of applications to, um, well, no, then I moved out here because I wanted to be an international tour escort to lead American tour groups around okay. the world. And it helped if you lived in what they called the getaway cities, New York, Miami, or L.A., right. Well, New York has the same terrible winters as Chicago. Right. Miami's too hot, mm -hmm. so I came to L.A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it took me six months to get the job. It was one of these catch-22, uh, get some experience and we'll give you the job. Right, right. But nobody wants to give you the experience. Right. So there was this one Japanese tour company in uh, Little Tokyo, 
um, Asian, Japan and, and Asian tours, and the guy said, I'm tired of you knocking on my door, so I'm going to let you go out to Asia for two weeks with George, our lead tour leader, and uh, see how you get along with people, what you can do, et cetera, et cetera. So he says, you can go to Asia for two weeks. I won't pay you, but you don't have to pay. So what have I got to lose? Another trip to Asia, free. <laughs> so uh, it was the last night. We were in Hong Kong, and the phone rang, and it was the uh, owner of the company here, Japan and American Tours, and the LA and uh, I heard uh, George. Oh, he's all right. People like him. Yeah, no, he's good. Uh, so he put. He said, "Here, Herb, uh, the boss wants to talk to you." And he said, uh, "Can you stay in Hong Kong tomorrow and meet your first group?" I said, "Sure." So that's how I became a tour leader. And uh, wouldn't you know it? Uh, you stand in the. Uh, waiting room, you know, as people come out of the airport mm -hmm. with the sign, Japan and American Tour, so people know to come to you. Yeah. So the first guy comes over, hi, I'm E.J. Scott, you know. Right. <laughs> Fine, me, said Mr. Scott, I'm Herb Koss, your tour leader. Put your bag here. He says, tell me, Herb, how long you been a tour leader? I said, 10 years. He said, thank God. I hate these new tour leaders. They don't know their ass from their elbow. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you know, so uh, anyway, I'm a good liar. How many times have you been the moon, Herb? Oh, it's my third time. You know? <laughs> yeah. So what were you, like 30 when you started yeah, doing that, yeah, something like yeah, that? Yeah, Does that yeah. sound right? Yeah. And what university did you go, what school did you go to? Uh, I went to, uh, I went to a junior college, Woodrow Wilson Junior College, and then, then I went downtown Chicago, Roosevelt University, and then. I started a master's at the University of Chicago, which I never completed, so that's it. All my, studying history? And yeah, history, literature, literature, you know, everything you have to take, yeah, you know. To be a teacher and stuff. And uh, what were you like as a kid growing up? Were you a troublemaker? Were you a good kid? No, I was a good kid. Uh, yeah. No, I, I had no trouble. I never got in trouble with the law, skipped school or anything. No, I just... Uh, do, dr do, do drugs or oh, any of that stuff? God, no. For, we didn't even have drugs. <laughs> and we didn't go to school with guns and knives. It's, yeah. I just don't understand the world today. It, yeah. No. And none of us dared talk back to a teacher. Yeah. None of us, you know. Yeah. Oh, no. We had to respect our teachers, and we were, we were all... Uh, what made you want to be a teacher? Just like well, I don't know. You got to do something. So sure. my mom's a my mom was a teacher elementary school mm -hmm. for thirty three years. Or mm -hmm. like good, that. good here. Uh, Long Island. Mm -hmm. Long Island. Mm -hmm. uh, do you love history? You have a love of history. Do you still love history? It sounds like when you go traveling, yeah. you go to museums and things. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I go to love museums. I go to all the museums here. See, not all, no, you know, but I. I try to catch all the new exhibits and everything, yeah. Do you have certain times of history that you particularly No, American, like? American, American history. some European, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, did you, and you're, you're an adventurer. Would you call yourself an adventurer? No, not really. Like Indiana no. Jones? No, <laughs> not at all, not at all. No? No, I didn't go... You know, take a canoe down the Amazon or you you cross could. the Sahara by <laughs> myself. No, 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 I'm not an adventurer. No, because it sounded pretty adventurous doing all that. Well, in a way, and, and, and how you do it so cheaply, you know. And by uh, yourself, too, right? Yeah, yeah, which is good because I've seen too many people start out as good friends, but go on a tour together and come home. Yeah. You know, uh, not enemies, but not friends anymore. Yeah, yeah. He smokes, she smokes, why do do this, that, and, you know. I want the air conditioning on, she wants it off. Right. You know, and uh, as a tour leader, I experienced a lot of that. Yeah. But in a way, you're never alone either because you're always meeting other young people that are traveling the way you are. Yeah. So sometimes you spend a day or two together here or there, you know, or ride the train from one place to another or something like yeah. that. So I'm, I met a lot of interesting people. I hear you're across the street from a school. 
Uh, and actually, it's just right around the corner. Around yeah, the corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's fun to listen to. <laughs> well, you're... actually, I'm getting hard of hearing it. Oh, it really? used to be that I'd go crazy in the morning with them ringing the bell mm. uh, to for school, and then, you know, they ring it at eight, and then eight ten if you're late, and then recess at 10 and then recess is over and then lunch and then lunch is over and then lunch recess <laughs> recess over <laughs> and, and then school is out you could go crazy <laughs> and then the kids running around in the schoolyard but I, I've talked to the school and they've turned the bell down really oh, that's really nice. low. yeah and um, yeah so I don't even hear the kids anymore for the most part it's, that's good you know, the window's open there, but if I close the window, I don't. Yeah, yeah. So I can't complain. It's the noise from the nightclubs that have grown up here in Hollywood yeah. that drive you crazy. Yeah. You know, music to 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So. Uh, and, then the, and then the crowds of people. And yeah. The yeah. Honking horns. And exactly, all that exactly. Nonsense. Well, what made you want to stay in Hollywood? Well, I'll tell you how I happened to come to Hollywood. I came out here to find work, and I didn't have much money. So I went downtown to the YMCA, and they said they're not a hotel. The YMCA hotel's in Hollywood. So I came out here to stay at the Y. It was $5 a night. When was this? 40-some years, 40 years ago. 40 years ago. And um, it was... With the, uh, with the television in your room and everything, so I stayed at the Y until I could get the job as a tour leader. And it took six months, came in time, I was almost out of money, and you can see how far I, I've i gone in life, uh, EJ, I'm right <laughs> across the street from the YMCA. <laughs> you made it. I made it, you yes. Made it. I might close this window, actually. Is that okay? Let me close it. It's sure? easier because you've got to step over me. Go ahead. Um, I just thought I'd just move here and here for you. No, I appreciate it. They might just be letting out. Now it's a little noisier than it was. Was it too cold or was it the noise from the kids? The, no the noise. Really? And I didn't hear anything. That's I'm okay. Going deaf. <laughs> Getting hard of hearing. You're doing great. You're doing great, Herb. You're doing great. Wow. Well, um, in all your your travels and stuff, I mean, was there ever did, did you fall in love a lot? Did you meet a lot of women and stuff like well, that? Well, yeah, you know, you don't know, fall in love, but you know, <laughs> you meet women, you have some yeah. relationships. Break no, some because I was here, there, there. You, I, you never spent much time, you know, I didn't spend six months or a year in Japan, let's say, right. to get into a relationship. Right. You know, so there, that's out of the question. So you didn't break any hearts? Oh, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. Did you have yours broken? There's a few lovely ladies that I owe. I'd love to break their hearts. Whoa. But you want to name I names? didn't have any luck. <laughs> no luck. They were all marrying some others. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun place I owe. Right? A lot of fun, a lot yeah, of fun. You like it there. I more than like it. The people I met there have literally kept me alive. Yeah. And I'm very, very sincere about that. Yeah. I uh, went to, uh, before I came to I.O., I went to a senior citizen center. There was a talk uh, for seniors on 10 more good years. What to do to live longer. Mm. And it was the normal eat your vegetables, get eight hours sleep, don't drink too much, don't smoke, right. that type of thing, uh, exercise. And then, last but not least, surround yourself with young people because young people will keep you young. Mm. So I said, gee, where am I going to meet young people? Well, I'm right around the corner from an elementary school. <laughs> but Perfect. I don't think that's what they want, fifth and sixth graders. No, no, no. You got the nightclubs. You know. You got the nightclubs. No, so anyway, uh, met Pete Holney at the Hollywood YMCA, and uh, he told me to come to I.O., and I did, and... Um, 
I've been there, uh, I don't know, 10, 11 years now. I don't know. Yeah, that's about right. And um, <clears throat> the people there have kept me young. Um, 2012, what's that, five years ago, I was very, very sick in and out of the hospital with heart and lung problems for eight months. And people, when I came home, started a food train for me. And people drove me to and from Kaiser when I had appointments. And... Uh, shop for me and uh, it was just wonderful just wonderful i and i go there now people um some gal came and cleaned my house i don't know she's going to come tomorrow and vacuum for me and um uh, I, I don't know i got uh, just some of my friends there it's uh, really amazing i'm in my 80s most in their 20s and 30s there's a few I mean, they're in their th now they were 20, 30s, now they're 30, 40s. Mm -hmm. uh, a few in their 50s, but uh, they seem to accept me and we get along beautifully. And I always look forward to going to shows there. I don't go as often as I used to because uh, it's hard for me to walk down there at night now. I yeah. don't like. So when I get rides, I go. And uh, also, I go to bed earlier now, too. Than yeah. So, but I, I, all good friends there. I just love going there. And Sharon is always nice. She said, I'm so glad you get out and you come here. And, you know, my parents are elderly, but they don't get out. And you do. That's wonderful. James Grace was always very, very nice to me. And uh, everybody there, so... You get your own special seat. You I get my front own row with your cushion. With my cushions, my <laughs> front seats, right on the aisle. Oh yeah, I uh, no complaints there. <laughs> no complaints. Uh, yeah, well, I, that's where we first met. I forget what show I met you at. Maybe it was a beer shark show. I don't remember. I know what it was. Oh, you do. I do. I was going in to to see. Actually, I didn't even know Beer Shark Mice was on. Okay. And I went there to see somebody else from the Y. Okay. And Beer Shark Mice came out, and you were right there by the box office passing out a notice that on Saturday night you were having a $5 fundraiser mm -hmm. for you for because you, you were going blind. Yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, well, since I'm at Braille... You know, I have this connection connection with blind people, so I couldn't refuse. Mm -hmm. So uh, I uh, came to your show, paid the five dollars, and it was so good. I gave another five when I came out, <laughs> and uh, that's how, that's how we met. Oh wow! Yeah. Do you remember what show it was? Do you remember? Well, like I, I well, what? there was a guy, another friend from the Y that was going to be on, that he wanted me to come see him. So I have no idea. The guy isn't at the Y anymore. I'm not even sure I can remember his name, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I mean like, in my uh, uh, fundraiser show, did you, do you remember what, what it was? Oh, no, no come no. on. That was, what, 10, 11 years? Yeah, I can't time. tell you what I had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> Expect me to remember that. <laughs> well, you remembered how, uh, how we met, so that was pretty good. Yeah, well, that was pretty good. That's it was good. one of the shining moments of my life, EJ. It just stood Thank out. Thank you, Herb. You Thank know. you. This is this right now is a shining moment of my life. Oh, oh, oh wow! <laughs> then you got a very boring life like me. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you're a pretty exciting life. I mean, last year I did a lot of traveling. I traveled all over the world. I traveled on every continent. But but you've done that many times over. No, you went with uh, mostly you, by myself. Oh, by yourself? Yeah. You traveled the world by yourself? Yeah, pretty much. Be, being per, almost blind? Yeah. That's wonderful. Where all did you go? I went to South Africa. I went to London. I went to Japan, China, Antarctica, uh, Chile. I went to South America a couple times in different places. I went to uh, Toronto, Canada. Um, what am I missing? Am I missing a place? I went to Australia and New Zealand. All in one year? All in one year. Well, then you came back and forth to America and went here? Yeah. Well, that's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. Well, it's no, it's just a lot of air travel. It's a lot of air travel. I've, I've gotten to the point now where I'm tired of air travel. Me too. Even though that was my living. And 
now I go to my friend, but uh, to do all that in one year is... Uh, it, it hurt. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable. It's just too much. But I got sick a lot. What, what kind of sick? I would get colds. One time I got uh, a virus in Rio de Janeiro in the hotel, and I was throwing up, and it was gross for like three days. Didn't you go to the doctor or anything? I had a doctor come to me, yeah, and the hotel, he helped so. me out, yeah. Uh huh. But he said it was just a, it's going to be like a 48 hour thing, and it'll go, you know, it'll pass, it'll pass. But I was there, I was running marathons on all these places. You went to run marathons? Yeah. That was your purpose to go to all these places? Yep. Well, did you sightsee? Did you do anything in all these? I sight saw, and, uh, and I ran seven, I did five half marathons and two full marathons all together for the year. Um, so, but I got to see a lot of stuff. I went to Great Wall of China. Jerry, you must have gone there. Oh, that. many times. But uh, I don't want to say, but you, you didn't run with your cane, did you? No, I had guides. How, how, what did the guy do? Run by your side and yeah, kind of tell you we go right now, we go left. Yeah, something like that. And I'd hold on to them, or we'd hold on to something. Now, where together. do you get all these guides? Uh, some of them, uh, I just on social media. I would, I would say, anybody know anybody in Africa that can help me run a, a marathon? Uh, and that worked. And, uh, yeah, just stuff like that. Or I would contact the marathons and say, I'm, I'm visually impaired. You, can you help me find a guide? And sometimes they'd help me. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. But now my knees hurt, and I don't know if I'm going to run again. We'll see. Uh-huh. How old are you? 41. Really? I had no idea. Thought you were still in your 30s. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah. Uh, I give you credit. More. I couldn't even walk a marathon. You had to long run a marathon. <laughs> but that... Oh, so, did you get to see a lot of things in these uh, countries? Sure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, what stood out? What was your favorite to see? The animals in South Africa. Mm -hmm. That was pretty incredible. Yeah. I'd love to go back. It was one of the hardest... W places to get to. Yeah, I don't know, the was, air. Yeah. Time. It's like 17 hours yeah. from Europe and There's all a that. Ton, a ton of... Yeah, time. and uh, so you went to Kruger National Park? Yes, I did. And yes, I did. you saw a lot of animals? Yes, I did. And I stayed in the park, or, or just, just over... Uh-huh. Yeah, it was great. Did you ever do camping and stuff like that? You oh, must have done oh yeah, 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 yeah. Did but, you ever, like, climb mountains? No, never climbed. No, no a, I've been a member of the Sierra Club. Do you know the Sierra Club? I don't. Well, do you know the name John Muir mean anything to you? John Muir? Yeah. Anyway, the founder, Scott, Scottish immigrant, came here, California, and started climbing the mountains here and uh, in California, going to uh, um, Yosemite. And uh, he, he got President Teddy, Ro Teddy Roosevelt to come out to um, Yellowstone. And the two of them camped there. And then Teddy Roosevelt was so impressed, they started the National Park Service. And Yellowstone became our first national park in Yosemite II. And so it's an environmental group. And uh, when I first came out here, I joined them, and I've been a member ever since. Mm. Uh, I th think it was one of the best things I did when I came out here, after I became a member of Kaiser, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, they go on camping trips here in California, all the national parks in the West here. They have day trips, weekend trips, week trips. And so I went to just about all the national parks on the West Coast with them. Wow. Uh, but I can't climb anymore. I can't yeah. even walk hardly. So I just send in my check every year as a member to support them, and that's it. But uh, Good for you. Good well, for you, Herb. I'm well, jealous of all the places you've gone to and gotten to see. Well. It's pretty cool. Well, 
<laughs> yeah. It's old hat to you, though, right? You're like, yeah, I did that. No, no, it's a question of, I mean, I took off years, so to see it all. But uh, you you did more. You uh, actually went to these countries to run, and uh, I don't know how much you saw in every country, but, uh, you know, if it was from a tourist point of view, if it was worthwhile, but to run, and, and that's a lot of money you have to spend on airfare. Yeah, that's a lot. To get there. Yeah. A lot of money, but it was, it was, well, it was worth it. It was fun. It was fun to do. So you do um, um, marathons here? You do the one every year in L.A.? No, I haven't done L.A. since 2012. Uh -huh. um, and we'll see if I run again because of my knees and everything. So uh -huh. we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Who knows? Getting old, Ari J. No. You're getting old. I know, Herb. I can't I'll have help to start it. giving you respect. <laughs> it's like my elder. <laughs> um, so do you, did you ever have kids? You never had kids? No. That you know of? No. Wink, wink. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Not or did you ever get married? Never. Never? Did you ever want to? Not really. I uh, Sometimes you ever get your sort of, but I wanted to travel, and uh, so, no. no. And the job I had would have been hard, you know. The traveling job? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so. I uh, did propose to a girl once in Chicago, and she turned me down, and a girl proposed to me, and I turned her down, and... Sometimes now that I'm old and lonely, I kind of regret it. Mm. She was a beautiful girl, very sweet, very nice. We worked together. and uh, But anyway, did life you, goes on. Did things. you date? Huh? Did you, get, did you date her? Yeah, of course, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, but I did not. Yeah. You don't think just out of the blue she stopped me in <laughs> yeah, the street. Yeah, she really was taken by you, and she's like, I have to propose to this man. It's one hour already. Okay. Uh, you, do you want to wrap it up? Are you, are you well, no, I don't know longer? how much more, but it's already an hour, so I don't know. I'm, how. I'm okay if you're okay. Well, let's see where we're going. What more do you want to add? Yeah. Um, so, uh, let's see. So, you got the traveling job here in L.A., and then you started going around, right? Yeah. All over. And how long did you do that for? 30 years. 30 years. Wow. Yeah. Um... And then from there, you did the Braille Institute? Yeah. Then what made you want to help the blind? Well, I'll tell you. I had my heart operation, hmm. my first one, and I uh, decided it was time to cut low or retire, like I said, independently poor. And uh, every Christmas, I, I don't know, 12, 15 charities I give to and unfortunately they send you requests all year long yeah. so but Braille was one I always gave to and I had all this free time on my hands and uh, so they send you a quarterly letter you know newsletter and they said they needed volunteers and I said oh well you know it's in the neighborhood it's uh, right there at um Vermont and Santa Monica, I said, that's easy for me to get to without a car. So I went there and uh, can't say they hired me because you don't get paid, but they right. accepted me. And so that's how I went there. And uh, I'd probably still be there, but the lady took over in charge of uh, volunteers and uh, she wasn't very nice. She fired all the people that were employed there to bring in her own people. And uh, I thought that was wrong because, you know, people have rent to pay, car payments, you know, just coming to fire them. So I didn't like her, and she knew I didn't like her. So <laughs> we agreed I wouldn't come back. But okay, oh. you know. That's too bad. Yeah, I know. How long were you there for? 12 years. 12 years, a long time, jeez. Yeah, well. And what would you do there? How would you help? Well, I would, uh, students would come in, they need help with their homework, read books to them. Uh, uh, the Braille Institute is um, 
located right next to LACC, Los Angeles City College. And uh, we had a blind English teacher who would come in. He needed me to read the stories that the students wrote and uh, so he could grade them. And uh, I had to remember all the punctuation, colon, semicolon, comma, you know, parenthesis and all, because he was there, that, there, yes, no, no. And so uh, I, I did that, and then, uh, then they asked me to have a class every Thursday uh, for an hour. Uh, news, I'd, we'd talk about the news, I'd read them articles in the paper and we'd discuss it, you know. Oh, really? That's interesting. Yeah, they, they were all nice. They, I don't know if they were all Democrats, really, or if they were just Democrats to please me. <laughs> but uh, we got along beautifully. So you're a Democrat, would you say? Oh, <laughs> capital D. <laughs> uh, yeah, how do you think Trump's doing? Don't get me started. <laughs> Don't get me started. Well, okay, it's over an hour now. and uh, Okay, you want to wrap it up? I, you I done do. with me? I'm done with you, yeah. All right. Well, hey, I greatly appreciate your time. You're more than welcome. I enjoy talking to you. I don't know how this will help you, but if it does, I'm glad to uh, <laughs> to, to have done it. And, uh, well, I want to thank you for all the support you've given me since I've met you. Yeah, but I haven't seen you in years. Know, There's no more living, support. You don't come around anymore. <laughs> I was living in Chicago for a few years. Yeah. And then I've just been, I just don't get out that much these days. Yeah. But I try to here and there. Good, but yeah. It's a good excuse to come and talk with you. And, good. And, you know, find out more about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you happy you, you talked with me? Yeah. I mean, felt? it's. I mean, you're not going to go out and... <laughs> oh, who, who, I talked to EJ, you know, boy, I'm so lucky. No, no, but I mean, I no regrets. It was fun. It was right. nice. I was glad to do it. Yeah. It's always good to see you. Always a pleasure. You know? Always a pleasure. Well, Herb, thank you so much. You're welcome, EJ. And uh, I wish you luck on your next trip. Thank you. And have a great time. Thank you. And, uh, and I wish you, and I'm trying to think you're Debbie, right? Deborah, yeah. Deborah, yeah. Yeah. I wish you and her all the best. Thank you, sir. Looks like you will get married someday, I take it? Maybe. maybe. We're, at, we're at almost 10 years together. That's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, I don't know. What's your rush? Exactly. You know, EJ? What's the rush? What's your rush? <laughs> Everyone's in such a rush these you days. You know. <laughs> she can put up with you for 10 years. She can put up with you for another 20, 30. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's what I figure, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to believe 10 years already. My God. What's your re longest relationship? Oh, I don't know. Let's not. All right, you want to get Are we off here? Let's All right. get off. All right. Thanks, Herb. Okay. And cut. There you go, folks. That was Herb Koss. Uh, I would say thank you, Herb, for talking with me, but he'll never listen to this uh, podcast. <laughs> but um, but uh, I'm appreciative for his time and, and his uh, uh, talking to me about his life. Um, cool. So one more time for my plugs. Go to Twitter at EJ Scott and at EJ Podcast. My website, ejscott.com. Instagram, EJ Scott 1106. The charity stuff, crowdrise.com slash seven on seven. And running blind documentary on iTunes, Amazon, or Google Play for only two or three bucks. Um, I think that's about it. Uh, and, well, um, I've raised money for the Croideremia Research Foundation. So if you want to check out more about what my eye disease, um, you could go to curechm.org. And I guess that's about it. We will see you next time. You could subscribe on iTunes. Don't miss any of my podcasts. You can also check it out on iHeartRadio and uh, whatever's easiest for you. All right. Thanks so much. See you next time.